So now we've looked at the, the Greek Stoics and the history of Greek Stoicism, what we're going to do now is move on to Roman Stoicism. And boy, if you thought the names, uh, pronou the pronunciation of names in Greek Stoicism was difficult, just wait till we get through this lesson. Because once we get this through this lesson, it's fine. We'll be able to deal with the complicated names in the rest of the course. So that's good. So I'm just holding my breath. You hold your breath as well. We'll be okay. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to take an introduction to the Stoicism in the Roman world. We're going to look at the Stoicism of Seneca, who was a very um, influential Stoic, who we're going to reference quite a lot through the rest of this course. Uh, we're going to look at how Stoicism developed through the imperial period in Rome. And then we're also going to have a look at the sort of development then on in to uh, the rest of the Roman Stoicism. So as an introduction, uh, philosophy was brought to the attention of the Romans during the diplomatic period of 155 BCE. And we've mentioned that, I talked about that in the last video, right at the end, the, the transition into Rome. However, there was also a, a shift away from Stoicism in Athens and a shift as towards Rome. That's what we talked about again in the last lesson, that, that it was sort of to died away in Athens, the, the Stoics. There is no evidence of a continuation of the Stoic school in Athens after uh, Panetius, Panetius, okay? And there's also suggestion that certain political events in the years 88 to 86 BCE caused a permanent shift in uh, of Stoicism from the lands of Athens and Greece in general to Rome themselves. So 155 BCE sort of laid the groundworks for the shift of Stoicism into the Roman world and then around 88 to 86 uh, BCE we see the permanent shift, a permanent uh, move into the uh, Roman era. So Stoicism also became a very important part of the transition of Rome itself from the late Republic to the Imperial era, so the Empire. So when it comes to Rome from Republic to Empire, there was a transitionary period, okay? It was actually Cato the Younger who became the most influential Stoic in Rome. And this was uh, partially because he was openly critical of the so-called tyrant Julius Caesar. And it, and it did attract quite a lot of popularity from people who agreed with him. And because he was a Stoic, his, his popularity grew. And we also have uh, Athenodorus of Tarsus and Arius Didymus, who were also important Stoic thinkers during this early period of, of Roman Stoicism. Uh, these two um, both had high social standing, in fact. And this really also propelled Stoicism into uh, through its popularity because because of the high social standing of of, Ta of uh, Athodorus of Tarsus and um, Arius Didymus we see the we see the growth of the popularity it gets a higher it gets more people listening to the ideas of Stoicism uh, they actually became counselors of uh, the Emperor Augustus so that's the kind of high levels that we're talking about and with this shift in the Roman history, the Republic going from the transition from Republic to Empire, we also see a shift in the substance of Stoicism. So the more theoretical aspects of the tripartite school that was developed by Zeno, the ideas of physics and logic, they actually became quite a lot less popular during this period. Uh, at the same time, the aspects of ethics in Stoicism became very popular. However, this is not to say that the theoretical aspects of Stoicism just went away entirely. They were just less popular than the ethical side. Normally, on, and during and under the Greek era of Stoicism, the, the, the tripartite were almost equal. So the physics, the logic, and the ethics were almost um, equal uh, in their value and in their, the amount that they are studied. But at this point, physics and logic sort of take the back seat for the ethical side. We can indeed uh, see a point. Uh, we can indeed point to a number of Stoic works that um, tackled some of the theoretical physics and the uh, metaphysical and the logical questions of the universe. Still, even though they did take a back seat, we can still see a little bit of uh, some works that tackle these metaphysical issues. An example is in Seneca's Natural Questions. Looked at a number of important issues in physics, 
and we also see a shift away from uh, stoicism away from purely academic okay and we're talking about academic in the modern sense not academic as in the school in athens the academy we're talking about the kind of what we would understand academia today sort of theoretical um and not very practical philosophy the kind of we start to see a move towards using stoicism in day-to-day -day life and we also start to see the likes of political figures not just thinkers so seneca and marcus aurelius were both uh, political thinkers but they also uh, shaped the stoic landscape and the period of um yeah this period of uh, of stoicism definitely contrasts with the 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 grecian and the zenoic and the uh, Chris, uh, chrysippusian chrysippusian <laughs> period of stoicism so when it comes to the stoic sources in the roman period uh, during the transitionary period to the Roman Empire, we get a number of indirect sources for Stoic thinking. And like I said in the first or the second lesson, uh, the, a number of books by Cicero can provide great details about what the Stoics believed. So during this period, we also get things like the the lives of eminent philosophers by uh, Diogenes uh, Lertius. And these sources provide us with further details on the theory and practice of the Stoics at the time. So, just like in Rome, there was definitely variety and disagreement among the. Uh, sorry, just like in Greece, there was a lot of um, disagreement and variety among the Roman Stoics. So, it can be said there were different styles when it came to Roman Stoicism. For example, people like Epictetus uh, was a, were strict philosophers. They were strict Stoics. His philosophy was very much modelled on the cynic model of ethics. And then you also have people like Seneca, who was uh, open to the pursuit of what he called uh, preferred uh, indifference. So uh, a preferred indifferent. But he also explicitly stated that he was critical of some of the doctrines of the early stoics so we just like we saw a transition between zeno and, and, and sisyphus uh, in the roman era we also see the greek the greek uh, period of stoicism um, being challenged by the romans and we also have people like marcus aurelius who were very open in matters such as theology something that didn't really occur as much in the in the greek uh, in the Grecian era, but as we move into the Roman era, these people took up and picked up Stoicism and did what they wanted with it. They wanted to develop it and change it. Okay, so really, as a lesson task, I'm going to link a couple of bits of reading, but um, just from this lesson in general, what really can we see are the main differences between Stoicism in the Roman period and that of the Grecian period? Okay, so think about what the main things were that we talked about in in greek stoicism and the main things we've talked about in this lesson and how they contrast with each other in the next lesson we're going to actually look in detail at the specifics of stoicism and look at the logic and the physics within stoicism